Javanese tradition holds that when the warrior is done with fighting, he must retreat to the mountains and live the life of a monk. But if the warrior ever finds the kingdom in desperate need again, he must be prepared to rejoin the fray. Do I have to go on this political campaign? <laughs> he was very aristocratic, aren't you? In recent years, Proboa Subianto has retreated from public life to his mountain farm, where he trains horses and raises goats. Some of my rivals, they make fun of me. He was a general, now he's a goat general. But for me, it's a compliment. I, I take it as a, as a compliment, you know. <laughs> uh, I own directly five hectares. Proboa Subianto uh, wasn't beach. just a general. He once headed the infamous Capasas Special Forces. His military stature made him one of the most powerful men in this sprawling Muslim nation. They don't have any livelihood. Some thought too powerful so to and too dangerous. So Maybe he'd take things into his own hands. And actually this whole thing I commanded 34 battalions. I was the commander of the strategic reserve. If I wanted to have a coup d'etat, you think anybody could have stopped me? You know? I, I, I was a combat general, you know? I was not a desk general, you know? Many of my colleagues, uh, what do you call it? Uh, accused me of not being brave enough. You know, uh, some of my uh, foreign friends, foreign generals, when I stepped down, they said, Prabowo, you're stupid. Why didn't you take over? And I said, uh, no, no, I believe in constitution, you know, and I want to uphold my constitution. That's my oath. Come on, Prabowo. Once you're in power, write your own constitution. <laughs> I love these uh, animals. Perhaps it was an opportunity missed. They're my pride and joy. <laughs> because Proboa Subianto has had to spend quite some time wandering in the wilderness before he could possibly contemplate another tilt at Indonesia's top job. They already have goats that can produce a lot of milk. Considering the skeletons in his closet, it's been an extraordinary reinvention. Oh, come on, come on. People say that I'm thirsty for power. I think you can see why that's not really true. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could have fooled millions of Indonesia's voters. Prabowo is spending big to win them over. And there's plenty to spend. Here's a hint. This private jet comes courtesy of his brother, Hashim Joyo Hadi Kusumo, a billionaire. Uh, he's the brains behind my campaign, actually. Not only in a financial way, yeah? because he's an entrepreneur. I think his gut instincts are also very good. Maybe I'm too old-fashioned, you know? For instance, to be very frank, I'm not good at dealing with the press, with you guys. <laughs> In fact, I'm very allergic to you guys, actually, you know. He's the one who convinced me, okay? My brother and I, we both have aristocratic titles. But that being said, we're both conscious of social justice. One of the things I always remember my, our grandfather saying is, you know, there's a term in French, noblesse oblige, noblesse oblige. It's like, it's the, with one station, with one status comes responsibility. And I, my brother feels that and so do I. You know, it's, uh, that's something we inherited from our, from our grandfather and, 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 and the family history. He may now be divorced from Sahato's daughter, Titek, but as a member of one of Java's aristocratic families, once dubbed the Kennedys of Indonesia, Prabowo's blood still runs blue. The people know that this is a part of our sense of responsibility. I think if you see John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, they come also from very rich family, but they were, they were always fighting for the poor of America, the underprivileged, the blacks. 
I think that's what also getting me a lot of support. They know I don't need to have this. We could have used this jet to go to a casino somewhere, you know. But we are, we are, uh, we are fighting for a lot of people. The endorsement of Sahato's brother, a private jet, and a big bank balance are invaluable when you're trying to convince tens of millions of Indonesian voters that you're not the same Prabowo Subianto, sacked for allowing kidnap and torture more than a decade ago. <laughs> Even when your high-flying campaign for parliamentary elections takes you back to former President Suharto's birthplace and into a hall resounding with wails of pain and agony. And it's not for the squeamish. A mass circumcision, a traditional family community event to help poor families fulfil their Islamic obligations. I have some real ideas on how to turn this country around from being a second-rate, third-rate country that's always begging for foreign aid amidst wealth. You know, we are a very wealthy country but we don't seem to be able to get our act together. Our people are uh, sentenced to be uh, poor. Our economic model, our economic system, actually, in essence, perpetuates an oligarchy. Only a few hundred families enjoy a uh, comfortable and wealthy life. The masses of the people, you see yourself every day, they're living very difficult lives. It's a cornerstone of the Proboa platform. He's standing as a champion of the rural poor. As the farmer who wants the presidency, it's not a big stretch. But will he be able to dust over the tracks that lead all the way back to his days heading the special forces? Back in 1998, Indonesia was in turmoil. For three decades, President Suharto had tolerated no opposition. Now he was losing his hold on power. The military tried to crush the agitators. Troops under Prabowo's command kidnapped and tortured nine democracy activists. During protests, Faisal Reza was followed, captured and tortured for three days. Dipukul,di-strong,di-gantung,kemudian juga,di-sundut-rokok,gitu. Uh, jatuh sampai kursi uh, patah itu. Huh? Now running for a seat in Indonesia's parliament himself, Faisal Reza says he could not live with a Prabowo presidency. Itu seperti hari-hari terakhir saya dipenculikan, di mana uh, kepastian hidup dan uh, mati itu begitu uh, tipis, dan mungkin kalau dia uh, jadi lebih baik saya meninggalkan negeri ini. I was a serving officer. Circumstances were different. Under different circumstances, maybe I would have gotten a medal. Some of the operations, we prevented uh, bombings. Some of these guys, uh, you know, they assembled uh, bombs. The nine activists known to have been kidnapped by Prabowo's men all lived to tell the tale. Thirteen others never came home. Nor Husana's son, Yadin Muhyiddin, is one of them. Anak ini ya, memang laki-laki satu-satunya. Tapi dia sangat baik di rumah ini. Makanya saya amat sangat sakit hati saya hilangnya anak itu ya Allah. 
Tapi sekarang saya nggak bisa, nggak pernah saya lupa. Anak itu paling baik. You've heard of Pak Prabowo. How do you feel about him regarding this matter? Dengan Prabowo itu, ya saya sih dia melakukan penculikan yang diculik dia bilang sembilan orang itu sudah dikeluarkan. Tapi dia nggak mau ngaku yang tiga belas orang ini. Nggak mungkin kan? Kalau dia nggak mau ngaku sampai kapanpun saya akan menuntut dia. Padahal dia kan yang melakukan penculikan itu. Kidnappings would prove to be Prabowo's undoing. A military tribunal led by Indonesia's current president, Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono, found him guilty of exceeding his orders and kicked him out of the army. Against the background of the war on terror, Prabowo now says one regime's kidnapping is another's extraordinary rendition. For instance, perhaps what is called preventive detention will be, in the end, spent as kidnapping and abduction. You know, I've uh, faced the tribunal. You know, and uh, uh, it so happens that many of those who are purported to be kidnapped by my soldiers, uh, they are now fighting to make me president. Yeah. In a peculiar twist. Two of the nine men abducted and tortured by Prabowo's troops are now candidates for his party. Another is a media advisor. That's why I asked some Americans, do you think uh, somebody who got out of Abu Ghraib is going to fight for United States? Somebody who comes out of Guantanamo is going to fight for United States? Well, these guys, they're, they're, they're working to make me president of Republic of Indonesia, you know? Why don't you go and ask them? Saya pikir semua badan itu kan asal kesentuh saja kan. Karena tujuannya kan nakut-nakutin gitu kan, asal kesentuh gitu kan. Karena kalau bicara tentang uh, jenis strum itu yang kita rasakan itu ada ada tiga, ada yang membuat kita kaget gitu kan, ada yang membuat kita lemas gitu kan. Tapi sesudahnya kita itu ada keluarlah puri-puri apa di di puri-puri kita tuh darah gitu kan. Candidate Desmond Mahesa not only forgives but celebrates his former tormentor. Yang saya salut dengan Pak Prabowo, beliau mengakuin bahwa kalau memang itu ada tanggung jawab terhadap beliau, beliau siap bertanggung jawab itu. Mudah-mudahan peristiwa kekalahan beliau pada saat bagian dari keluarga kekuasaan lama kalah di kekuasaan lama yang lalu membuat beliau semakin arif dan bijaksana Dalam artian kalau Tuhan meristuin beliau jadi pimpinan, ini ada kewaspadaan yang lebih tidak melakukan kejaliman-kejaliman lagi kalau yang lalu dil- melakukan kejaliman. People who talk about my brother's human rights record, they forget to ask why did any of these so-called activists who were kidnapped, why are they alive today? You know, it would have been much more convenient for my brother to eliminate them. And the reason why he got into trouble is because they survived. Nine of the activists survived, and that's how we got into trouble. I mean, they were the ones who were used as witnesses and uh, to to, uh, to prosecute my brother during that time. I think the easiest course would have been for him to eliminate him. You know, and then the fact that he did not eliminate him is, I think, testament to the fact that he's not the um, the human rights violator that people say he is. Following his tours of duty in East Timor in the 80s and 90s. Prabowo's been accused of being involved in numerous atrocities. I've been accused of ordering my soldiers to rape women. I've been accused of surrounding the state palace. I've been, I've been accused of bombing churches. I've been accused of bombing mosques. You know, I mean... So w- which ones are true? None of them are true. It's a black campaign. It's, you know, it's, it's character assassination. If you want to eliminate somebody, you have to destroy him. Sometimes physically, sometimes by reputation. You know, 
And uh, I don't know, maybe people were afraid of me. Many people were afraid of Prabowo, and they loathed and feared the brutal militias he established and encouraged. The concept of militia, the concept of local self-defense forces is an age-old concept. That's the part of the Indonesian national defense concept. In every counterinsurgency, you always work with the local people everywhere. That's what the Americans found out in Iraq. They have to work with local militias, you see? So it's not me creating, it was part of our national doctrine. The claims about his activities in East Timor are many, but none have been fashioned into hard evidence and then criminal charges and made to stick. But once again, we find an extraordinary twist of the foe becoming the family, literally. Jao Mota is from East Timor. He isn't fearful of Prabowo, rather he likens him to a brother. Mota was one of seven children Prabowo fostered during his years as a soldier in East Timor. He come to us not like a soldier and give us an order. No, he come to us like a family. He share with the family and he called my mother his mama. Jao was just six when he first met the then Kapasa Special Forces commander in Dili. Prabowo has looked out for him ever since. He treat me like a brother, more than a friend, I think. And he always look after me sometimes. He keep his soldiers doing their job. There is a very basic rule for the soldiers. If you go to the combat field, kill or to be killed, and this is something that's really natural and this is really... Soldiers was be trained to do that. But outside of the combat field, he's a kind of person open to everybody. He helped his enemy, also his friends. <laughs> Prabowo's attempts to remodel his image are constantly undermined by bonds of loyalty to his military friends. One of his personal aides is Bambang Cristiano, a former major dismissed and jailed for being a commander of one of Prabowo's kidnap and torture teams. The deputy chairman of his Gurindra party is former Special Forces Chief Mukti Puropanjono, who many still believe was involved in the 2004 arsenic poisoning murder of top human rights activist Munir Talib on a Garuda jet to Amsterdam. Munir's organisation, Contrast, was founded to investigate the kidnappings and disappearances. Mukti was cleared by a court despite the existence of phone records of 41 calls at the time of the murder between him and the man now serving 20 years for the crime. What can we do? I mean, we have a legal process, as in all other countries, you know, and he's been through it under fair scrutiny, I think a very intensive scrutiny by all the press. Let it stand uh, on the legal basis and the legal examination and the legal process. That's what I say. Given his associations and unsavory background, the propulsion of Prabowo, the politician, is to an outsider astonishing. In just 12 months, he and his brother have created a new party, the Great Indonesia Movement. Gurindra now boasts more than 10 million members and everyone receives a year's worth of accident and life insurance. The billionaire's heirs, a son and daughter, are also working for the campaign.
yang begitu kaya raya, tetapi rakyatnya tetap miskin. Ini memberi kita harapan, pemilu ini adalah kesempatan kita melakukan perubahan. Cukup sudah cara-cara lama. An expensive TV advertising blitz is providing Prabowo with unparalleled exposure. He presents himself as a nationalist and market-friendly socialist with grand government plans to reinvigorate Indonesia's rural heartlands. Prabowo even compares himself to Barack Obama. I think the reasoning was, I'm also an unlikely candidate. People always say I don't have a chance. Gerindra. But uh, I'm fighting for change. I'm fighting for real change and I, I offer uh, you know, real change from policies. I, I'm the only candidate of Indonesia that says we need to change the economic system. He may find parallels with the new American president, but it's a clumsy contrast. As a violator of human rights, this potential Indonesian president uh, is barred from entering the United States. God is my witness, history is my witness, my former soldiers are my witnesses. 11.2 million members of a Grindra, they will never follow somebody who is a criminal. So, I would love to visit the United States. I consider myself for many, many years a uh, friend of the United States. So uh, I think uh, in time, uh, things will sort themselves out. From his Sukarno era safari suits to his Sahato family past, Prabowo's underlying message is that Indonesia will never flourish without a decisive leader like him. That is why I believe in democracy, you know, because I experienced an authoritarian regime. I was part of it. I think our people want strong leadership, decisive leadership. That does not mean, and I don't think we can ever go back to authoritarian ways. Whatever the West and human rights activists think of Prabowo, millions of Indonesians now consider him a credible contender for the country's top job. In just over a week, they will judge Prabowo's prance across the national stage when they cast their votes in the national parliamentary elections. The results on April the 9th will determine whether this dark horse stands a chance in the presidential race.